Welcome back to the Seaboard Central, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about tractive effort versus horsepower. Many people often confuse horsepower and tractive effort. And in today's video, I'm going to discuss some of the differences between the two and talk about why each are important and why one may be more important to the other, depending on the circumstances. So what is tractive effort? Well, the definition is the pull developed by a locomotive. The maximum tractive effort value is directly proportional to the weight on the drivers and the adhesion. And the definition of horsepower is any combination of pull and speed that equals 550 pounds of feet per second. The example would be pulling a force of one pound for 550 feet and accomplishing that in one second. And another thing we must consider when talking about tractive effort and horsepower is adhesion. The adhesion factor is the ratio of the adhesion to the weight of a locomotive. A good ballpark figure for steel wheels on steel rails is around 30%, although most older units only produce about 25% of adhesion. A typical GP40-2 can weigh anywhere between 250 to 280,000 pounds and has an adhesion factor between 25 to 30 percent. So if a GP40-2 weighs 260,000 pounds and has an adhesion factor of 30 percent, that means it will take 78,000 pounds of force to slide the wheels. So in other words, a GP40-2 with its brake set will actually start sliding down grade if more than 78,000 pounds of force is pulling against the coupler. When it comes to tractive effort, a lot of locomotives will often have similar capabilities, even though they produce different horsepower. For this reason, railroads will often categorize different models in the same group. Here's a chart I made up of different locomotive models categorized by weight, tractive effort, and horsepower. I've also placed them into groups that are made up of similar tractive effort capabilities. Note that the tractive effort is listed in pounds and is considered as the continuous tractive effort achieved in notch eight without experiencing wheel slip or stall on dry sanded rail. You can pause the video to see each model. I'll also provide this list on the community tab and the Seaboard Central Facebook page. Today we're going to compare the EMD GP38 to the EMD GP40-2. Both have the same tractive effort, but their difference is in how much horsepower each produces. And today I'm going to use SC2001 and EMD GP38 with SC242 and EMD GP40-2. The EMD GP38 has a non-turbocharged 16-cylinder 645 cubic foot engine that produces 2,000 horsepower. And the EMD GP40-2 has a turbocharged 16-cylinder 645 cubic foot engine that produces 3,000 horsepower. Per the chart, they both produce around 55,000 pounds of tractive effort, which means they are both capable of pulling their maximum tonnage capability around 11 miles an hour. So why would a railroad want to buy a GP40-2 that would use more fuel and require more maintenance cost for having a turbocharger than the GP38-2, which would be cheaper to operate? The simple answer is speed. That's what it comes down to. Horsepower equals speed. So in this comparison, both locomotives are capable of pulling their trains up the grade. But the difference is the GP40-2 with a higher horsepower is capable of achieving a higher speed when it comes to any type of grades on the line. For this reason, you will often see railroads assigning their low to medium horsepower units to the yard and switcher duties, while assigning the higher horsepower units to the main line, where speed is more of a factor. So when it comes to railroads, to have rail lines capable of higher speeds, having a higher horsepower unit makes more sense. But for secondary lines where speeds are limited to 25 miles per hour or less, 
The extra horsepower is less important. Actually low to medium horsepower units that are capable of similar tractive effort is a better choice. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of a much simplified version of tractive effort versus horsepower. And if you did, I really appreciate a thumbs up. So until next time, I'm Tim Garland. Thanks for watching the Seaboard Central. And happy model railroading, everyone. <laughs>